So now that we've figured out how to actually show a template by using a Python function called a view and getting to that view because of our URLs, we now want to think about how do we actually store data in our database. And what we do here is we go into our apps and we go into a file called models.py. So this is actually where we'll be storing all of our data. And this has a lot to do with kind of like structuring what a form might look like. So when you fill out a um, contact us form, for example, you fill out certain fields in there and then that goes somewhere. Now what models do is it kind of maps what those fields would be and stores it in the database in some sort of table. Um, so what that is, is essentially saying like, if you think of an Excel spreadsheet, you have columns and you have rows and then you name those columns and oftentimes you might name rows too. In this case, we're essentially just naming columns and we're giving some sort of type to those columns. You'll see what I mean here in just a moment, uh, but there is something that I do want you to take a look at is you want to go and check out docs.djangoproject.com slash en for English, 1.8 ref models fields and model field types. This is going to show you all of the different field types that you can use. Um, some of them you'll use all the time, some of them you'll barely ever use. So let's actually go ahead and create our first model. And we called our app newsletter. So our model, I'm also going to call newsletter. So class newsletter. And we'll go, it's models.model. So it inherits from the class model. And it's already imported. Models is already imported. So that class is where it's coming from. Um, and if you're curious about that, you could always go and check out the code to see what that actually looks like, that class. Um, but if you don't actually have to at this point because um, we will show you some of the things that you can do. And well, let's think about what we're trying to get from our users if we want them to sign up for our newsletter. Now, we would probably want to get their email. We might want to get their name. So let's just say full name uh, and I'll just leave it as that. We also might want to get when it happened. And that is also known as a timestamp. So like when this actually occurred. Um, so those might be the few things that we actually need. I mean, is there anything more than that that we might need? Um, it's possible you might want to know what their zip code is. You might want to know um, like their choices for something. Um, you might have all sorts of things in here. But for us, we're going to keep it nice and simple and just do email, full name and timestamp. Now email we can go in here and set it equal to models dot email field. So email field makes sense because it's an email. So it needs an email field. Uh, full name will do models dot char field. And a char field is like a character field char. Some people call it a car field. You might hear it as that um, char field. So character field, um, something related to characters. Right, so it's numbers or uh, letters. It could be either one. And then timestamp being equal to models dot date time field. All right, so these are three different types of fields here. And each one has its own pluses and minuses. So date and time field is a date and a time. There's also what's called a date field, which is just a date. And there's also a time field, which is just a time date and time com uh, combines those two. Um, and what's nice about this is we can automatically set it when our model is created, which we'll see what that does here in just a moment. So what I'm going to do here is say auto now add equals to true and then auto now equals to false. So let's talk about these parameters for just a second. Auto now add means when this model is created, you'll understand what that means once we actually create it. But when it's created, save this timestamp versus when it is saved at any time, save that timestamp or whatever that time is. So basically, this is only done one time. Once it's created, that's it. It's never going to change. This will be basically be, well, a timestamp. It's not going to change at all. Uh, another field that sometimes you'll see is updated. 
and you'll it's basically the same thing but this reversed so let's just say just like this so false and true that those two are just slightly different auto now being when it's saved it will say the last time it's updated timestamp will just be set one time updated will be set many times so i'll leave it just like that so we can see those two these are really good for time but if you don't need time then it doesn't matter but in, in the case of getting an email sign up this is something that you might want now email field right this field itself is this something we will definitely definitely have um, yes we definitely will have an email field Right, we, when they sign up for an email newsletter, they should absolutely have an email field. Full name, we might not need their full name. So we can add a couple attributes here. We can say blank equals to true. And we can also say null equals to true. Null as in being empty in the database. Blank as in blank in the form, which this will come to light a little bit more later. Um, but you can also set a default. So you can set a default value equaling to something. So you could also do that as well. And these three don't necessarily all have to be set. You can leave them out if you'd like, but what does have to be set is say max length. So the maximum length that this character field can be. So this is length in characters. So the number of characters you want it to be. So if you want it to be a lot, you could say like 2000 or you want it to be a little bit, you could say 300 or 40. That's a lot of characters still for a name. I'm gonna leave it at 120. And I'm also going to get rid of this default here because I don't need a default. And default and can work with most model fields anyway, so just keep that in mind as well. Uh, and that's also true about blank being equal to true and null equal to true. It works in most fields in general. Now, worst case, if you aren't sure of something that works, you can look at this field reference guide and take a look and see what's actually in there. Right, so what we see here is this is char field this is the one we're going with. It has one extra required argument, which is max length, as we've just seen. That is something that we're doing. That's a definite argument that would have to be added. Uh, and if we scroll down, we see the date field. Notice auto now, auto now add, and it goes into all that stuff as well. Okay, cool. So now that we've got this, we've got our email field. Let's actually take a look at email field. I'm going to scroll down a little bit and see email field, see if there's anything else that's required. There is nothing, but notice it says a char field that checks the value is a valid email address. Hmm, this is something that we will definitely discuss as far as validating this data, uh, which we'll see here in upcoming videos. But for now, this looks pretty good. We have a required field here uh, denoted by these two, right? So if it, they default to false, they default to being required and they default to not being null in the database, so empty in the database. Um, but for how we have it set up now, we've got their email, full name, timestamp, and when it was updated. And then we have to set what's called a Unicode. So Unicode. And this Unicode is for instances of the, um, of the actual model itself. So instance class instances of the model and this is uh, for Python 2 and then Python 3, you would use STR instead of Unicode. Um, so the Unicode is Unicode data, so you can actually read this on another level, basically. Um, and we'll see Unicodes quite a bit, and we'll take a look at them here shortly. But now that we've got this model and we can return, what, what in here would we want to return? Probably the email. Right, so self.email. So one of these fields is what we actually want to see most of the time, and email is going to be that one. So we'll leave it as self.email. Um, and I'm just going to make a note here that Python 3 is that. Okay, so now let's actually think about how we're naming this. I called it newsletter, but maybe it's not a good idea to call it newsletter because realistically what this is is a sign up form right it's a sign up like whatever it is is sign up it's not newsletter newsletter would be the actual newsletter that we're sending out so this is a confusing name it doesn't actually make sense where sign up would make a lot more sense and you want to make sure that you do the uh, ca uh, casing just like this so capitalize the first letter and then if it's two words, bring those words together, no spacing with a capital word on the second one. 
Okay, cool. So now that we have this, we have sign up and we've got our first model actually created. Let's add it into the database. Now with any app at any time, in order for it to be in the database, we have to go into settings.py. Now, if you remember, that's in our configuration folder, settings.py, right where we put our templates. If we scroll up a little bit, we have installed apps. If you remember, we wrote in newsletter, but if you didn't do that, it's okay. It might look like this on a, on a blank project. It would probably look like this. So we would do newsletter here and make sure we spell it correctly. And then now we've added this app in. This is very important for a few things, but mainly, mainly for models, mainly for making sure that this stuff is in our database, which we set right here. So now that it's in here, we can do something. And that is we can run a migration. So we go python manage.py and make migrations. So this command right here is one that you're going to use a lot whenever you're making changes to that file models.py. So we hit make migrations and now you see it says migrations for newsletter. It does the initial one and it created the model sign up. Perfect. That's what we want to see. And now that we've done the initial migrations, we have to run the migrations by doing python manage.py migrate. So python manage.py migrate. This initializes the migrations, so starts them off. This actually runs the migrations and puts them in the database. So I hit enter. And now it says operations to perform all this stuff. And we see that it's running the migrations and it applies that new initial one right there. And if I hit migrate again, there's no migrations to apply because there's not, we don't have them at all. Cool. So now we actually have this model in the database. Well, how do we add stuff to this model? There's several ways to do it. What we're going to be doing in the next video is actually adding it through the admin. So that is when we go into our, our project, let's make sure the server is running with Python manage.py run server. Now what we want to do is when we go into admin, we want to make sure that we can actually add users here, just like, or excuse me, add signups here for that new model that we just created. If I hit add, I can do users, but we want to do it where it's actually our new signup class or our new signup model. Um, so if you have any questions on this so far, let me know. Otherwise, we will see you in the next one when we add this model into the admin.